This is an update on the latest space weather. Forecast says that we have a solar storm incoming this weekend. It's expected to hit Earth on Saturday, just as our planet exited a strong stream of solar particles. Earth was caught in the midst of a surge of solar particles March 30th and 31st, and it caused northern lights to be visible as far south as Michigan over the Great Lakes. But the sun is being particularly active right now in another solar storm anticipated for April 4th. The stream of particles now making its way across the uh, 92, 93 million mile journey, that's 150 million kilometers, the distance between the sun and the earth, where they're expected to arrive on Saturday. The cosmic forecast site Space Weather says Earth is exiting a stream of solar wind that sparked bright auroras around the Arctic Circle March 30-31st. Some of the lights even dipped into the U.S. as far south as Michigan. The next stream of solar wind is due April 4th. We know that the auroras include the northern lights, the aurora borealis, and the southern lights, aurora australis, and they're caused when solar particles hit the Earth's magnetosphere. And as the magnetosphere gets bombarded by these solar winds, these particles, we get stunning blue lights, not just blue, they're all colors of the rainbow. I know because I saw them once when I was about 12 years old over a Montreal sky in Canada. They're beautiful. It's like a shimmering sheet above you with no sound whatsoever. And uh, this is what's happening now. These lights can appear as a layer of the atmosphere deflects the particles. But uh, researchers also know the consequences of a solar storm and space weather can extend beyond northern and southern lights. For the most part, Earth's magnetic field protects us from the barrage of radiation, the solar particles, solar radiation, but also from cosmic rays. Solar radiation coming from the sunspots and solar storms can affect the satellite-based technology as well. And solar winds can eat the Earth's outer atmosphere, causing it to expand. And this can affect satellites in orbit, potentially leading to a lack of proper uh, signals, proper GPA, GPS navigation because of that, or glitches in our phone service and satellite TV. And also surges of particles can lead to high currents in the magnetosphere, which can lead to higher than normal electrical surges in the power lines, resulting in electrical transformer power stations, blowouts or loss of power. That does not happen, uh, on the most part, this doesn't happen, but it did happen when we had a crippling solar storm back in 1859, known as the Carrington event. That was so strong that telephone systems went down across Europe. There are also reports that some buildings were set on fire as a result of the electrical surge from that. Now, recently, scientists said that they find these solar storms should be happening every 25 years on average which means, of course, that we're very much overdue. Researchers from the University of Warwick in the UK, that's just basically north of Coventry, I've been there because my son used to go to university there for law school, and um, the British Antarctic Survey also analyzed the last 14 solar cycles. They went back 150 years examining these solar cycles. Their analysis showed that severe magnetic storms occur in 42 out of the last 150 years. The great superstorms occurred in six years out of the 150. And uh, they say, of course, that if it happened now, it could down technology on our planet. The University of Warwick Center for Fusion Space and Astrophysics Professor Sandra Chapman said, these superstorms are rare events, but estimating their chance of occurrence is an important part of planning the level of how we can lessen this, how we can mitigate this uh, and protect the critical natural infrastructure. I don't know how many countries are able to protect from a solar storm. Do they have protection in place? I doubt it. As she said, this research proposes a new method to approach historical data to provide a better picture of the chance of occurrence of superstorms, that is, solar storms, and what a superstorm activity, solar storm activity, we're likely to see in the future. 
So also, uh, uh, more on space weather, and I'll leave a link below for you for this. The um, sunspot AR2759 has a reversed magnetic polarity that identifies it as a member of the new solar cycle 25. The X-ray solar flares, 6-hour maximum, 8-2, 1543, uh, April 1st, that's today. And the speed, solar speed wind is 432.3 kilometers per second. Density 5.5 protons per cubic centimeter. Now, cosmic rays. The solar minimum is underway. The sun's magnetic field is weak, allowing extra cosmic rays into our, uh, to the solar system. Neutron counts from the University of Ulu's Sodankila Geophysical Observatory show that cosmic rays reaching Earth in 2019 are near a space age peak. The Ulu neutron counts for today are plus 10.6%, which is very high. The maximum, 11.7%, very high, was December 2009. So we were very close to that, as you can see. The minimum was minus 32.1%, very low, which was June of 1991. This is, of course, on the update of space weather for today, April 1st. We have uh, also a, uh, an increase, a decrease in our uh, magnetosphere. When uh, cosmic rays crash into our Earth's atmosphere, they produce a spray of secondary particles that's most intense at the entrance of the stratosphere. And uh, physicists Eric Reniger and George Fotzer discovered the maximum using balloons in the 1930s. That's how they measure this today. Why are cosmic rays intensified? The main reason is the sun. Solar storm clouds such as coronal mass ejections, which we're having in a few days, CMEs, sweep aside cosmic rays when they pass the Earth. During solar maximum, CMEs are abundant and cosmic rays are held at bay. But now, however, the solar cycle is swinging towards solar minimum, allowing the cosmic rays to return. Another reason could be the weakening of Earth's magnetic field, which helps protect us from deep space radiation. Now, the scientists are not sure as yet why the Earth's magnetic field is weakening. I'll leave links below for you for this on Space Weather. And Express UK by Sean Martin. If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media and not certainly on not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece in Capota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.